Well, it's been a while since we've had uh, an extremely relevant game in terms of standings here. And uh, certainly this is uh, a relevant game, not only with another rival basketball team of ours coming in, but a team that sits on top of, of the league in first place with, a, with an unblemished record. So we're excited about the challenge. Cincinnati is one of the better defensive teams in the country. They have a veteran ball club in certain areas. Uh, they have outstanding guard play as well as very good interior defense. I know Justin Jackson tweaked his ankle the other day and somebody just showed me a thing that he said that he feels like a million dollars right now so we fully expect him to be healthy and ready to go, uh, which is the way you would want it. So it uh, should be a big game for us and we're very excited to have uh, the Bearcats in. It'll be the last time that they come into the KFC Young Center after a long and storied uh, rivalry. What makes their defense so good? Yeah, it has been their strong team. Well, Mick's an excellent defensive coach, and he, they, they contain the basketball very well. They attack, and like a Wichita State team, they attack the paint defensively, Marquette, with all five of their players. They close out very well, and he's a terrific shot blocker, one of the best in the country at changing shots. Kilpatrick, I think, leads the conference in scoring. He had 27 against Temple. What, what makes him such a difficult matchup? You know, he shoots it well. He drives well. He's, he, he reads screens extremely well. Good size. Uh, he's done it for a long time. Has great experience. What have you seen from Chris over the last week? Is he? He's a health. He's 100 percent practicing well. This, this has been a bizarre schedule. Um, we have another long yeah, no. yeah coming up. Uh, I'm not sure what, what the answer is. I know other teams have gone through it as well. I'm not sure why this type of schedule must be TV related in some form or fashion. But he's fine in practice. He's looked great. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but if you'd like to say great, go right ahead. <laughs> what do you anticipate staying with the same starting lineup that you had the past couple of games and, and bringing Chris off the bench? Only because we, you know, we never start guys coming off injuries. And then, as I've said many times before, starting is so irrelevant to me personally. So as a coach, so it really doesn't matter. But we don't, we don't. When guys are injured, coming off the injured list, we don't usually start them. Rick, you talked about how well you played the last four games since Mint. So what's going into that? What do you see? That's been... well, I think that Mango and Montrez have really worked very uh, hard and diligently on their low post game, and uh, our guys have been getting them basketball more in the low post. So I think that. That improvement has been good. I think also we've we have gained a a large friend in terms of being able to change our defenses and recognize when we should change our defenses and the players pick up on the keys. Where they really struggled for the first twelve games of the season. This matchup, the demand and back and forth. They're just a changing of different presses, different defenses. They struggled with it on a make or miss or on the type of shot we would make. They. They really struggle with it, but they they have it now, and it's 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 been a, a good blessing for our team. When did you start to see in the fact that they were starting to get those things and, and being able to see those keys? Just from practice, just just going over and over and over it until they got it. Where are you confidence-wise with Montrez shooting? I mean, he's hitting 16, 17 footers. He had a turnaround against South Florida. Is that just a carryover? I mean, he's been working very hard on the turnaround and individual instruction. Uh, you know, the thing about Montrez is that it's it's definitely okay for him to hit 15, 16 foot jump shots, but you don't want a steady diet of that because it takes him away from offensive rebounding. And it's almost like, you know, you, you have three or four really great skills and you don't want to go away from those three or four great skills and, and try to showcase others that take you away from what you do really well. So it's okay. I've got a lot of confidence that he can take those shots. You want him to take it when he's open, just like Gorky did last year. But you don't want to take him away from being an offensive rebounder by spending too much time falling away. Is he becoming better at rebounding outside of his own area? Offensively, he is. And how big of that? How big could that be for him in terms of his future here and future in the pros? You know, I, I really. I'm not going to keep quoting my book about a one-day contract. I really, I really think the, the worst thing we do in sports today is just talk so much about the future. And it's just that you don't, you don't enjoy what you have now. Um, you know, so you, 
I think when the time comes to speak about him being a pro, we'll speak about it. But this, this is not the time for that. Sure. Take a focus on from that. How much more effective would that make him as a player, offensive rebounding and being able to? Put you know, I just think that his 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 length, his wingspan makes him have the potential to be an outstanding rebound. The thing he has to learn more than anything else, and we've been working on, is is stop being so upright, because upright people are unathletic people. You know, most of his athletic feats are when he gets a running start at the rim. Uh, but, you know, when he's at on the baseline or he's posting up, he needs to be in a, a what I call triple threat position. He needs to play with his knees bent. And that's the, been the biggest focal point we've had with him in the last three weeks.